Okay, so if you remember not so long ago, I made a video concerning a portable emergency cased dual band uh, radio, which is what we've got here. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I, I think I've done that on my past video. I just wanted to show um, a bit of an addition that I've made to this um, over the last sort of few days. What I wanted was this radio to be a little more, bit more self-sufficient in that once the batteries were flat I had to bring it back to the shack and charge it up. I was using lead acid batteries um, similar to these ones here, these slabs. Um, this is only a 2.8 amp hour battery which uh, isn't amazing um, and it's not really very practical um, because it just doesn't last at all. I needed something a bit more uh, with a bit more power to it. So what I've done, I've redesigned the case slightly and this is what we have. The case opens up, the antenna that I use for short distance portable is just this uh, diamond antenna, it's an SRH 771, it covers dual band 144 to 430 megs um, which I tend to use, it works really well to be fair, the square isn't amazing on it but it does tune in just using this uh, simple setup here, um, just tighten that up a little bit. You can either obviously plug that in, it's um, a PL259 plug, so that or a mag mount which you can use on a vehicle um, or uh, obviously in your home base antenna you want to plug into. That really has come quite loose. Let me just tighten that up. So this is what I tend to use and this is what I'll be using to demonstrate it today. So the idea is that you've got a radio in here, now any radio will fit in. Uh, if you look on the top, hopefully you can see there that I've got my me, uh, me power pole plugs and uh, the PLT59 antenna plugs just there. So you can plug any radio you want into that, you've got your power and you've got your antenna. Um, and what I wanted was the radio to be able to be used pretty much straight away once you open the case. And I wanted also to be able to have this radio power up other items. For example, uh, if I wanted to plug in this cheap little LED USB light, I've got an adapter there for 12 hour cigar lighter, and you've got your socket there. So that can plug in there, that can plug in, and then turn the unit on. and then you've got your 12 watt light. It's quite effective at night, it's not too amazing during the daylight obviously. Um, microphone pops in there. This is the addition, this is the latest addition here. It's this solar charger, solar charger controller. And what this enables me to do is to charge up the battery, the lead acid battery that's underneath this roof, or underneath this case top, and hopefully keep the battery protected against total discharge and overcharging. Because one of the problems I had was I was discharging the lead acid batteries uh, too often. And I believe if you go below sort of 9 or 10 volts with lead, uh, lead acid batteries, I believe you can actually ruin them, um, which is obviously a great problem. So um, in order to prevent damaging the cells and the batteries, get a charge control on it. The idea being that you turn the, the unit on like so. It gives you the voltage output, which is just displaying sort of about 13 volts on here and all the outputs um, from the battery, i.e. the radio, your spare power pole and your 12 volt cigar lighter, it's all controlled by this. So if everything was turned on, you can turn it on and off using this on and off switch here and ultimately to kill the battery completely, you switch it off there. The problem that I had, which I didn't really plan, was that the RF from the radio is such that as soon as you transmit on two meter band it actually knocked this charger controller off so if everything was powered through the charger controller from that output as soon as you transmit on two meters um, even though the, the battery power was, was, was completely full or whatever this would just switch off and the radio would just turn off you had to physically turn this on again it was okay on uh, the other band on the uh, the seven centimeter band but um, it just couldn't cope and the RF is such that even the computer speakers which I'm sat next to right now uh, they would really hum quite a lot so it's obviously is picking up a lot of interference and it just doesn't like it so what I decided to do is I've powered the radio directly to the battery so regardless of whether these things here are switched on the battery 
will always power the radio. It's linked straight to it. Um, so that's what I've had to do with that. And that works quite well. All the other outputs are still controlled via the output from the solar can charger. So for anything else to work, you have to turn the main switch on. You then have to press the power button there. And then it's now displaying the voltage and you can turn that on and that light works. And likewise, anything else that's plugged into this socket as well, or that 12 volt, will come to light. And to turn these off, you press that. That kills all the power, but the main battery is still connected to here. Now that's important when I come to charging the solar charger, because if I go and get my charger lead now, I'll show you why. Okay, again, from experience, if you have solar connected to a charger controller but you don't have the battery connected you can actually damage the charger. This controller um, it's only a cheap one it probably doesn't matter so much with more expensive ones but particularly with the cheap ones that you pay between sort of seven and fifteen pounds for these can damage quite easily so what I've had to do is to make sure that I can turn on the power to this before I plug in the solar charger. So again that's what this main switch here is for. So if I want to charge this up now I have to turn the main battery on so this is powered up and you can tell this is powered because the battery light is showing as such and then what you do this is the lead to me solar panel which is outside I'll show you shortly that just plugs into there like so and then whether you can see that or not I don't know but the green light now for the solar is actually displayed. So this is now working, it's now charging this battery so I can still use my radio whilst charging the battery. Um, if I want to uh, turn on the outputs, press the power button and it's now displaying the voltage, it's now giving me the outputs as you can see like so. So this works so far quite well. The only problem is that the idea of having the solar charger connected in this way was that I wanted to protect the lead acid battery from discharging too much. This obviously means that, yeah, sure, if I'm charging mobile phones or other radios via these ports, they will uh, switch off once this battery gets below a certain voltage, but the radio will stay on. So something that I'm going to need to do really is just to basically keep that switched on so the voltage is displayed on the readout so I can keep an eye on the battery and if it gets below sort of 12, 10, 11, 12 volts, that sort of area, then uh, I need to be switching this off so as not to damage the battery. But apart from that, so far it's worked quite well. Um, if I've got my other radios here, if you just bear with. Yeah, so the example was taking that light out I can plug in a handheld radio like the Sol Bofung, plug it in and that will now charge. So I can charge up various different appliances using this battery and this solar configuration but to protect the battery everything here will switch off once the battery in here has got below a certain voltage. Just need to keep an eye on this radio. So apart from that, it's quite a good setup. I'm quite pleased with it. It works well so far. I need to do a few more experiments, keep on playing with it. Um, there's a few more improvements I can make. I'm thinking about putting a few more outputs on here as well. Um, I potentially I could put some sticky back plastic and folders up here to keep paperwork, frequencies and such like. Maybe that's what I can put this aerial in to store this aerial. Um, it, that's just something else I'm looking into. Um, so remembering here to turn the, uh, oh actually I can unplug that straight away, no problems there. If I just take this off, just to show you underneath. Again, this is the kit and that's the battery I'm using at the moment. 12 volts, 7 amp power battery, I'm not sure how long that will last. The disadvantage with this particular radio, with it being a cheap one, you've got to expect disadvantages. That the power, uh, the minimum power it'll transmit, um, I believe, is 20 watts, 
which is the low power. Is it 10 or 20? Either way, I would like to be able to go down as low as 5 watts because I think 5 watts is a nice, nice, use, uh, nice useful sort of power to use. But um, for the moment, anyway, that will do the job. So that's where I'm up to, and that's my update. Uh, I hope that's been of some help. I've got another video coming up um, soon for a more, another more portable solar battery uh, pack, uh, which will uh, will get reviewed on very soon. So thank you for watching, and uh, I'll catch up with you soon.